Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, this is Two Car Pros, and today is a very special day because this is the beginning of our very long playlist on how to build a big block. So, this video series is going to entail getting a Chevrolet Gen 4 big block from a junk yard, a parts dealer, or like a used old truck or something. I wanted to make this video series so you at home could watch me do the work and then you could do it in your own garage. I want to make this as hand-holdy as possible so the videos are going to be kind of long so that's why I'm going to put them in a big playlist and piecemeal them together so that way you can find the content you want to watch or you can just watch them all the way through. I recommend watching the entire thing start to finish that way you get uh, every single bit of information, you're not missing anything. This is also for a pretty mild big block build. This isn't for a, you know, insane race motor that's gonna make 900 horsepower or something that we're gonna put a supercharger on. This is just for a uh, kind of middle of the road, really nice Chevrolet big block. And this is a Chevrolet Gen 4 big block. It came out of a pickup truck, I'm pretty sure, somewhere between 1970 and 1990. It is a Gen 4, so keep that in mind if you found like a Gen 5 or a Gen 3. They're all pretty darn similar, but there are a couple differences here and there, um, but nothing too major. And uh, I'll point out whenever you need to look something up when it's bespoke to a generation of big block. With all that out of the way, I wanted to also say that this is angled at somebody who has worked on cars in the past, who's pretty familiar, pretty comfortable uh, with turning wrenches, but maybe just hasn't built an engine in their garage. So that's what this video series is gonna be all about. I'm insanely excited to get started on it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the front accessories, the carburetor, intake manifold, and the heads today so we can jump into that. So the first thing we need to do is take off the flywheel on our big box Chevy so we can put it on our engine stand and we need a, so we're gonna use a 11 uh, impact socket here. There we go, just like that. All right, so as you can see, we have three out of the four um, bolts that hold, hold the engine to the engine stand. So these are 3 8 bolts, they're about mm, three and a half inches long and that's what actually holds it onto here with some pretty heavy duty washers because this thing weighs about 600 pounds and you don't want it just uh, clawing its way through these little cheap uh, metal fittings here. And you want to leave these fittings a little bit loose so you can adjust them and you just want to line it up so you get one into here, one into here, one in the lower here, and one in the lower here and do not uh, relieve tension off the crane until all of the bolts are in and tight and do use four out of four do not try to use two out of four or three out of four make sure you are always using uh, those four together all right so now we can tighten up the uh, nuts and bolts here on the engine stand Make sure those are nice and snug uh, for obvious reasons. And there we go. Okay, so uh, we got the engine on the stand here. A little bit of a problem just due to our stand being really stupid. Uh, we tightened everything up so everything here is all tight and uh, you might notice we have a screwdriver in here That's because the engine is pretty top-heavy with the iron heads on it And uh, if it starts turning in the middle of the night or something you're not attending to it The whole thing will you know fall over really quickly so having something in that hole Will be beneficial and our the the pin that came with it won't fit in it because uh, we couldn't get the fitment quite right so our big block is now ready for disassembly. All right, so what we're gonna work on is uh, removing all the front accessories from our big block here. And as you can see, I'm missing an alternator or sometimes there's like a clean air pump here uh, and a power, power steering pump I do have and I have a water pump. So we're gonna focus on removing those today um, because we need to gain access to the front of the engine anyway and it's just more weight off of here. So. What we can first do is remove the 
one bolt holding in my power steering pump. And in fact, it's not even tight. I can twist it off with my hands like this. So your situation might look a little bit different. You might have more accessories. You might not have any. So I'm just going to do what I have available right now. Now I can remove this uh, water pump hose here and uh, hopefully the engine doesn't have any more water in it, but you never know. The likelihood of you getting every last drop out of the heads and intake manifold here are, uh, it's very low. So don't be surprised if it pees on you a little bit. And you can be as destructive as you want. You can even just cut this if you <laughs> really don't mind because you're not going to be reusing this stuff anyway. And it looks like there's, it looks like this big block has been uh, drained of fluids for some time. If you're keeping uh, these front accessories and bolts and stuff, you're going to want to hold on to them. They can be kind of tricky to find, but I'm going with all new stuff, so I'm just going to throw it all away. It's funny, on mine a lot of them are just kind of finger tight, but I did get this out of a junkyard, basically. I think this came out of a uh, 60s or 70s uh, heavy duty truck that would come with a uh, 454, probably a 70s 454. Shoot, they made them all the way in the 90s. Uh, so we want to go ahead and remove these four bolts that hold the water pump to the block there. And uh, once we do that, we can kind of pop this free and there might be a little bit of fluid coming out, so make sure you got a bucket ready. And the four bolts, at least on this big block, are 916s, they're usually when it comes to engines, 916s, at least America, these old American ones, is kind of your go-to size. 916s and half inch, basically. Okay, so they're <laughs> not on very tight. I love the amount of grime that's on this kind of stuff. It's always, it's always exciting. You never know what you're going to get. So, I've uh, removed all four bolts here. You might notice that it's not exactly coming loose. That's probably due to the amount of filth and grime and build up that's uh, accumulated over the years, so it might take an implement of bash or pry to get it off. Okay, so that's on there pretty good. <clears throat> okay, uh, so take a little bit of uh, manpower to get that off, but uh, once it's off, you can kind of look into the water jackets there, and uh, yeah, I don't think this engine's had uh, any kind of water or coolant in it for a large number of years. These bolts down here are 5 eighths that hold the power steering pump uh, to the block. So 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, half inch. Those are really going to be your best friends in this tear down and rebuild. I'm actually going to keep this power steering bracket. I bet I can just paint this and uh, it'll look great. All right, the next thing we're going to do is take off this uh, fuel line here for the carburetor. And it's a 5 8 so we're going to be using a uh, line wrench here. And again, if you really didn't care about this, you could just you know, grab a saw or plier or snippers and just cut through this metal fuel line. But uh, the correct way is to do it the, you know, this way. Take the fuel line off. And it's on pretty tight, actually. There we go. The next thing we can remove with a 7 16 socket is our fuel pump here. There we go. And since I'm getting a new fuel pump, we can go ahead and toss this one. All right, the next thing we can do is to remove the springs that are part of the throttle assembly here. Because that's really going to uh, hold everything in place. Well, I guess it's just this one. This will all come out as one big piece, so. All right, I guess it's just the one spring. Go figure. Just a return spring. If you see any kind of vacuum lines holding uh, things in, just take them off, like this positive crank test. Crank pressure tube, and just remove that, because I believe that runs to the base of the carburetor. It does, very good, you can just remove that. The vacuum advance for the rotor here, we can go ahead and remove. That's what this uh, vacuum line is. So with that, I think we're ready to uh, Take the carburetor off. This fuel line is mounted to the uh, intake manifold here, and it's. I'm not going to take it off the carburetor, I'm just going to remove it with the carburetor, so we need to remove that nut, which is a half inch, and then we can remove the uh, carburetor here, also half inch bolts. This carburetor is a little funny, where it has the bolts go all the way through the body of the carburetor into uh, the intake manifold. It's a little interesting, sometimes uh, they look a little bit different, but uh, there you go. 
And these are, again, keeping in the theme of this junkyard engine, these aren't even in tight at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure I didn't need a socket. Let's see these bottom ones. See, these bottom ones are tight. So there should be four bolts holding it uh, to the intake manifold that you need to remove. So this has part of the throttle linkage uh, with it. It's kind of spring-loaded, so you might want to just be careful. Because it's going to want to kind of boing on you like that. There's another vacuum line on this side over here. You guys can't quite see. I think my own advice here, not removing it properly and just snipping it because it's just a uh, silly vacuum line that I'm never going to use again. So now if you were going to reuse everything here and you're just trying to do a cheapy cheap rebuild, which is no shame in honestly, um, then you want to preserve those uh, vacuum lines and carburetor and stuff. But not me. So with the carburetor, the way we do have the bolts access necessary to remove the intake manifold, which is a big step. But before we do that, we need to remove the rotor, this piece here. All right, to take the rotor off, we need to remove this bolt that holds the rotor to the top of the intake manifold, and it's a 9 16 And it's really easy to remove it outside the car, um, because obviously my wrench would be where the firewall is in a normal car. What makes it working on an engine stand really, really nice. Get that bolt and securing hardware out of there like that. Now there's nothing holding the rotor in. We can just go ahead and pull straight up with it like that. Don't try to angle it this way or that way. Just come straight up with it and it will rotate off of the uh, camshaft down there as needed. So, and you can check the condition of your rotor. Obviously this one's in a little rougher shape, but I think I can rebuild it and reuse it. So I'm gonna set this aside for later. All right, the next thing we can do is remove the uh, intake manifold bolts and they should all be 9 16 ah! What you can do next is take a plastic hammer and just kind of strike around where the mating surfaces might be. Rubber mallet, same thing. Because this has been together for so long, that it uh, sometimes really hard to get apart. So when you shock it using a rubber mallet or a plastic hammer or something, um, yeah, see, it lifts off a lot easier. Uh, barring that, you could use some leverage in a couple of places if you wanted to. Like that. Sometimes it's easier to take the valve covers off too. But I did this way. That's okay. And remove it and expose our lifter valley. All right, so the next thing we need to do is remove both valve covers. They're exactly the same, so I'm gonna show you how to do one. And it's just a seven, it's just a seven sixteenths <laughs> socket here, and there's eight of them. So you just need to remove those. Now, if you're reusing your valve cover, which is understandable because Honestly, you could probably just paint these and get away with it if you really wanted to, but I'm gonna get new valve covers, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss these. I'll go ahead and remove that and exposes our rocker arms. All right, so the next thing we need to do is remove our rocker arms. Now, if you are going to reuse this head and basically reuse these rods and reuse all this and reuse the springs and reuse everything, uh, and you're just looking to put it right back on, make sure you write down or mark we where each and every one of these goes. Maybe take a picture, mark on them with different colored markers, do something um, because these wear surfaces are nice and put together. This also applies to the rods and the uh, rollers touching the uh, camshaft. So keep that in mind. You have to put everything back to the exact way it was. You can't like put this one here and this one there. So you need to make sure that all of these are exactly the same the way you took them out. Keep in mind, I am not going to do that. All this is going to go into the trash or I'm gonna sell it because I'm not even gonna use these heads again. I'm gonna get aluminum heads. So keep that in mind while we uh, do this build together. These are 11 uh, nuts here. These bolts that hold the uh, head of the block here are 5 8 we can remove those. So with those two head bolts gone, we can see that this is what it looks like. And we're going to do that uh, for all these rocker arms here and get all those bolts out and rods out so we can take the head off.
So if you're going to reuse the same rods and crankshaft and rollers and uh, rock arms and stuff, you really need to keep track of which uh, rod came out of where. But I'm rebuilding this whole thing. I'm not even using the same camshaft. So everything in the trash, but the rockers. I'm keeping the rockers so that way when I sell them, uh, I can be a selling point instead of them coming without rockers. So now we can take out all the bolts that are holding the head on here that are kind of in between here. And with the rockers loose, it's really easy to get around them and stuff. So that's what we're going to do. So all of the bolts holding the head onto the engine have been taken off, um, but normally you're going to need an implement of leverage and be really careful. These heads weigh, I think, set 65 pounds a piece. So I'm going to get my leverage implement here. There we go. Make sure it doesn't drop on your feet. Okay, with all those bolts out, we can be really careful. And you want to pick up from both sides. See my left hand over there, kind of hard on the shot there. Uh, lift out and lift out. Ugh, I can safely put those on the ground. They're very heavy, so be careful. All right, the next thing we're going to do is grab a pair of dial calipers because we want to know whether or not this engine has been bored out. Uh, with the head gasket gone, we can go ahead and measure the diameter of the bore. Now a stock big block bore is 4.25 and what it measures here is, what it measures here is about 4.25. It's, it's hard to get a accurate reading due to the ridge ream around there, but you can see that when you pull on it a little bit and it goes to 4.25. So the bore on this particular big block is stock, it has not been modified, which is excellent. Now I'm gonna pull off the other uh, valve cover and head, um, but it's exactly the same as the other side, so we're gonna do it in fast motion. So that is the end of our first episode on the Chevrolet Big Block. It has been a lot of fun so far, but make sure you're subscribed down below so you can keep track of what we're doing because the next episode is going to keep coming out. They're going to keep coming out. I'm going to put them in a big playlist and you're going to be able to watch this build start to finish. And by the end of it, you too will be a Chevrolet Big Block expert. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you next time.